Hey everyone, how is it going? I'm going to do a tag video today, uh, which was created by the uh, self-proclaimed legendary booktuber Adam from Memento Mori. And I want to make this video uh, especially because I think the prompts are really interesting uh, for this time of year. And like he says, uh, you know, at this time of year, lots of booktubers are making these best book of the year videos and the worst book of the year videos. And, uh, but there, there's, uh, not all that much sort of discussion or reflection on overall reading experience and these prompts look at some other aspects of the reading experience rather than just you know the top books or the worst books uh, which I think is really good because I mean it's one of the things I love about booktube the most that it's not just about what we're reading but how we're reading and why we're reading certain things and and uh, and yeah so I think uh, the prompts are really interesting so I've uh, I printed them all out so I can go through them this is gonna be a lot of fun. So uh, starting with the first prompt which is the longest book you read this year. It's a two-part question and the book that took you the longest to finish which is a really good interesting way to phrase it and put it because just because a book is longer doesn't mean that it's going to take us longer to read and I especially always find that um, if, if a book is dragging for me if I'm not really that into it but I feel like I, I want to finish it then I, I'll push myself through it but it'll take me so much longer to read because uh, yeah it just feels like a chore and, and I'm it's always a pain to go back to it. So, um, so I thought the longest book I read this year was going to be The Overstory by Richard Powers, uh, but that's actually only 500, 520 pages or so. Uh, so the actual longest book that I've read this year is one that I just read recently, and that's uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, and, and, uh, and I just made a whole video like gushing about this book, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. But uh, uh, but yeah, this is going to be, um, actually hasn't been published yet, it's going to be published at the end of February of 2019, and, uh, and this sprawling, amazing fantasy novel in this sort of mythologized Africa, drawing upon all this African history and folklore, and uh, yeah, it's an incredible tale. I think it's around 640 pages, uh, but I, I was so into the whole adventure of it that I just enjoyed it so much, and you know, and I don't read fantasy novels all that much, but but this is very different and uh, and does something really interesting and exciting, so, uh, so yeah, that was a great experience. But uh, but actually, I probably read this in a faster amount of time than Anna Burns' novel Milkman, which took me much longer. So Marlon James won the Booker Prize a few years ago, and uh, people uh, would, uh, when they described reading that book, they would describe it as a difficult reading experience. And uh, people have done the same thing with Milkman, and I found the same thing with Milkman. But whereas with A Brief History of Seven Killings, I uh, was so gripped and into that book that I I, uh, I read it all the way through and it didn't feel like a chore, whereas Milkman really felt like a chore. And I, I wasn't reading it just because it was long-listed for the Booker Prize, but I thought she was doing really interesting things in it and I, I wanted to stick with it. And I've talked about this a lot, but, uh, but yeah, just it dragged so much for me. Every time I went back to it, I felt like, oh, here we go, I'm gonna read more, I'm gonna finish this book, and because of that it took me so long to get through it, or at least it felt like years or decades to, to get through reading this book. And I know other people haven't had that experience, other people have, have breezed through it, loved loved it, and uh, yeah, so, so didn't find it difficult in that way, but that was just my individual experience reading it. So, you know, we read books differently, that's what makes reading and booktube and talking about books online so exciting. So uh, the next question is a book you read in 2018 that was outside your comfort zone, and uh, I, I have to admit, uh, this, this, this question is sort of calling me out, that I don't read outside my comfort zone all that often. Although, uh, another, I'm, I swear I'm not talking about the Booker Prize just to like annoy Adam, but um, I'm gonna uh, talk about another book uh, that was on listed for the Booker Prize, which is Sabrina by Nick Donasso, and it's a graphic novel, and I don't read all that much uh, many graphic novels or or, or graphic memoirs and and uh, but uh, I wanted to 
read this uh, because, uh, yeah, it was slightly outside my comfort zone. And I, something I really enjoyed about the prize was that it, it pushed me to do that. And uh, and so yeah, and and I and I found it a fantastic reading experience. Really got into the story. I thought it was so beautifully done and beautifully done as a graphic novel. And what it did that not just the text of the novel created the story, but the way that he portrayed these characters in these drawings who all had these very mute-like expressions and their expressions really reflect the the story and the confused response they have to what has happened of this woman who is missing and this sort of blankness in their lives and the the blankness of their environments they they're all in these very stark empty rooms and uh, and it just adds to the overall effect and mood of the book and and uh, I really enjoyed that and and would like to read more graphic novels but you know I think one of the things that prevent me from doing it like a lot of people um is that they're prohibitively expensive it's really um costs a lot to buy graphic novels because they're very expensive to produce so they um they 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 uh, they cost a lot more to do so I sort of feel like it's it's almost the same thing with poetry that um, unless you're really into graphic novels and that's your thing um, you probably won't buy all that many or uh, or 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 um, or consume all that that many graphic novels just because uh, they are so pricey to get and and uh, and they um, oh, the, a uh, ambulance was just going by so there's a blue flash light there but uh, but uh, yeah so um so yeah, that, uh, that was slightly outside my comfort zone, and I really enjoyed it. Number three is, how many books did you reread in 2018? And that's another book question that's sort of calling me out of, uh, I don't reread books all that often, and I know that I, I should reread more because, uh, because yeah, I know I get so much more out of reading rereading things. Like I read... Um, Julian Barn, uh, Julian Barnes novel a couple of years ago, uh, which I'd read almost a decade ago, and got something totally different out of it. So I actually only reread one book this year, um, which is really shameful, and that is uh, Virginia Woolf's uh, Orlando. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I um, and I reread this specifically because I was going to an event that was all around. Orlando, because uh, it was it was celebrating an anniversary of of the publication of this novel, and uh, and I wanted to to gear back up on it, and and I hadn't read it since I was at university, and uh, and yeah, and I found the same thing. My reading experience of it was obviously very different from when I was in university, and when I think I was looking at it in a much more analytical way, whereas here um, I was just enjoying the playfulness and uh, fun and romance and odd odd um, perspective of the whole book of this uh, this man who turns into a woman uh, who uh, turns into something else and uh, lives for many more years than uh, normal people sort of you know in the same way of like Richard Powers um, story like gives a very different perspective on time where uh, at, that's sort of looking at history and the periods of time in Richard Powers' novel from the perspective of a, of a tree. Um, this is from the perspective of somebody who lives much longer than normal people and transforms over the decades through the different ages as the culture changes and um, and uh, leading all up to the, the war in the 20th century. And uh, yeah, I I, um, I adored rereading this, and and I you know made a whole video gushing about uh, my rediscovering my love of Virginia Woolf again, and uh, and yeah, I I can go back to her endless times because her her prose are so intricate. There's so much to get out of them, and she has such odd, weird turns of phrase uh, that uh, that yeah, there's so much to unearth from the the text of her books, and uh, and of course in this book there are things about there's a sort of classism to it there um that the only reason that orlando is is able to grow and change this way and express um their gender in different ways is because of the privileged uh orlando is a member of the aristocracy and uh, and you know people who are working class can't do that and you can pick holes in it for like that and and quite rightfully make criticisms for it like that but uh but it is such an incredible book that uh that yeah there there's there's so much to get from it 
So, uh, next question is your favorite reread from 2018. So obviously I would have to say that's Orlando because it was my only reread from 2018. So quickly go through that question. Uh, question number five is a book you read for the first time in 2018 that you look forward to reread in, rereading in the future. And uh, uh, there, there's lots of books that I would really like to go back to because I think I would get so much out of them again, including Milkman by Anna Burns, because um, as Simon and many other people have said, uh, listening to it on audiobook uh, might be a much better experience for you as a reader if you find it a struggle to get through the prose, just because they're so sort of convoluted and circular that read, reading it on audiobook um, can make it a much more palatable experience than just reading it on the page. So I would really like to reread uh, Milkman uh, on audiobook, but um, a book in particular I would really like to reread is Don't Call Us Bed. <laughs> Don't Call Us Bed? Don't Call Us Dead by, uh, this is sort of uh, whiting out because uh, the background is white, but Don't Call Us Dead by Denise Smith. There, phew, got through the title. <laughs> and, and, uh, and this is a book of poetry. And uh, again, I don't read all that much poetry all the time, um, but I, I have read several books of poetry this year. And, uh, and this book is so incredible. And I think there is so much more to get out of these poems, uh, which are equally funny and moving and heartbreaking and political and uh, intellectual and uh, incredibly thoughtful. So there, there's so much to get out of them. And, you know, and, and like with a lot of poetry, the more you reread it, the more you'll probably get out of it. And the part of the joy of poetry is that you can just go back, read a poem here and there and spend a lot of time thinking about it rather than feeling like you have to reread the whole collection. So this is a book that I'm definitely going to be going back to, dipping into and out of reading poetry at different times and, uh, and, and finding more in it. So looking forward to going back to this. Uh, question number six is favorite single story or novella that you read in 2018 and I only read a few books of um, short stories this year I, I usually like to read more because I really like short stories but um one book is uh, Night Gaunts by Joyce Carol Oates and uh, again I made a whole video specifically about this book in uh, reaction to Sean's um, the epigraph ta tag um, uh, talking about this book in relation to the quotes that Joyce Carol Oates uses at the beginning of the book and one of the short stories in the book uh, is called The Experimental Subject and I love this story so much because it's just wild and crazy and and daring and outrageous in what it does so it takes the perspective of um a woman at uh who's going to college and she's uh she doesn't have many friends she's quite isolated and um shy and uncomfortable and she's spotted by and uh, and befriended by this uh medical student a psychology student uh, who's participating, who's created, well, who's part of, uh, um, created, part of creating this experiment, which is very um, controversial and so has to remain very secret. And what he does is, yeah, where it goes, it's, it's so crazy um, and so outrageous. And uh, and I don't want to give anything away, but it involves an experiment of sort of evolution. And, uh, and Joyce Carroll is somebody who talks about Darwin Darwinism quite a lot. She's really interested in that and um, going beyond Darwinism of sort of this idea, like, can we make evolutionary leaps or um, play with... Um, Play with evolution and uh, and and uh, and so uh, these psychology students and a um, psychology professor um, create this biological experiment using this girl and uh, and it's it's a uh, it's an incredibly gripping story uh, and I think would make an amazing film I I hope that. That, that that it would be made into a film because yeah it would be an incredible it's yeah an incredible story so uh so yeah that's um one of the stories that i enjoyed most this year then uh 
Question seven is Mass Appeal, a book you liked and would re recommend to a wide variety of readers. And this, going back to the Booker Prize again, is uh, is a whole was a whole big issue um, about uh, readability because uh, yeah, Milkman. Some people would say. Uh, including me, is not the most readable novel, whereas there are other books on the list which were much more readable, um, including Normal People by Sally Rooney, which is another book that I would just recommend to anyone, and uh, which I've had conversations with friends um, offline, real-life friends, uh, who, who don't participate in the online book community at all, and, um, and who loved Normal People, uh, and, uh, and uh, said, uh, I think, particularly interesting, because uh, a lot of people with Sally Rooney, they they um there seems to be this like reputation that she's an overly analytical or intellectual writer but her her novels are two novels are are so incredibly readable and uh, and normal people is incredible and i'd recommend to anyone and uh, but i've been talking about normal people but i'm holding up actually washington black by sa dujin which was also uh shortlisted for the booker prize this year and uh, and is incredibly readable so gripping is an adventure story but also very intellectual and um and you know i wouldn't say fun because it is it handles very dark subject matter but uh but is but the way she writes is is uh so beautiful and and uh and so insightful and moving that uh that yeah it is just incredibly gripping and i just breezed through this novel even though it is quite long how long is it it's uh it's, well only just over 400 pages but uh but yeah is is uh is such a joy to read that i would recommend it uh to anyone and would uh and yeah and hope lots and lots of people will read it and uh then the next question which is looking at the sort of polar opposite which is really interesting is um specialized appeal a book you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just anyone and uh, and I know there's there's a lot of books like that that um, that books that I I enjoy because of the particular subject matter or they it may be like really stylistically interesting why the author wrote it in that way and uh, or yeah it's just a specialized subject that I I really enjoy or or a writer whose sensibility that I sync with that may not. I can guess won't appeal to a wide variety of readers and uh, and so one of those books is um, People in the Room by Nora Lane which was um, written many decades ago but has only been um, translated and published in English for the first time this year and uh, and this is a novel um, South, South American novel that uh, that is uh, it it does what it says on the tin it's um it's about a woman uh, looking out her window observing these three other women in uh, the house opposite and how these women just sort of sit in this room and don't really do much and it's just her observing them making guesses about um, who they might be what they might be doing their relationships with each other and uh, and inventing all these scenarios for them and uh, so yeah plot wise not a lot happens in this book it's more it's uh, more just about the um, her her imagination and the way in a sort of similar way that Rachel Cusk does of telling more about the character from uh, her observations of other people rather than looking internally at herself because she's um she's uh, uh, I think she's in her late teenage years and so she's just on the brink of adulthood and so she's sort of letting behind this imagination of childhood this imaginative world of childhood or or at least the um, you know, we feel that once we become adults, we have to sort of leave all that behind. And uh, and she she just likes to sit there and imagine these women in all these different scenarios. Some of them, you know, these really melodramatic scenarios and, and others just very like domestic, um, dull sort of situations that she imagines them in. And, uh, and so, you know, it never yields any real answers. There's no uh, big sort of climax um, to the book, but it's, um, it's, I think it's so fascinating and interesting her way of looking at this woman's psychology and and uh, and the way uh, we observe each other, the way that we project onto other people, uh, that uh, yeah is so good, and uh, I really enjoyed it. But yeah, wouldn't recommend it to a huge variety of people, um, just because uh, yeah I don't think it would have an incredible mass appeal. 
So uh, then finally, um, well, not finally, but uh, the ninth point is he asked to reflect on your year as a bookish content creator. Uh, this could be goals met, good, bad, memories, favorite videos you made, etc. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I, um, I think this is quite interesting because um, yeah, I, um, I, I feel like I've sort of been finding my voice a bit more. I mean, I guess we all do as the longer we make videos on booktube the longer we find our voice the more comfortable we feel with this weird experience of talking directly to a camera and not having anyone speak back to us but um but knowing from having more comments and having more interactions with viewers in the comments that uh that it is really like a dialogue and um and it's something i enjoy the most about booktube and making videos is all that interaction and getting recommendations from people and um, and yeah, and having more in-depth chats about the experience of reading as well as particular books. So um, so yeah, I I um I feel like I've been finding my voice a bit more and getting into a pattern of, that I'm comfortable with. And uh, and I know a lot of BookTube creators um, like Adam have sort of thrown up or given up um, making haul videos and uh, reading wrap ups. But uh, but I enjoy the the sort of the. Uh, the rhythm of that, how that follows the the rhythm of a uh, reading month, and uh, and so I um I I still do make call videos and wrap up videos because yeah it's a good time for um both excitement about books that are coming up and reflection on what I've just read, and uh, and so I always sort of think in my mind that those are the two videos I want to make any month, every month, and um and any other content is just sort of a bonus that just comes up as as it as it comes up of of what I feel like making and responding to and and talking about on booktube videos so um so yeah I I enjoy that that rhythm um and I I know as a lot of other booktubers change and grow that um that that might not work for them anymore and that's totally fine and and it's really interesting the creative new kinds of videos that different kinds of booktubers come up with that really suit their their character who they are and the way that they read and what they reading so um so that's great and and i would like to rather than highlight my own videos um so much i, I would like to highlight some other booktubers videos that i've really enjoyed this year so um annie the wonderful booktuber from her booktube channel which is uh am i right that's what she calls her booktube channel and uh and she she's she's uh she's so wonderful to watch and she made a great anti-valentine's book recommendation video earlier this year back in February um, which was so enjoyable to watch even though I'm I'm a big sucker for Valentine's Day it's my favorite holiday I'm I'm a big old romantic at heart uh, but uh, but I really enjoyed her anti anti Valentine's Day um, recommendations uh, I would also recommend uh, Matthew Sharapa um, who's always a delight to watch uh, he made a hilarious absolutely amazing um, review video which uh, his uh the video is called i love this stupid amazing book and and it's a and it's uh this sort of a fantasy novel i guess that he's describing it's it's a book um that again i would i would never read just because i don't think it's my sort of thing but uh but i so enjoyed watching him talk about it and the way he talks about it the creative way he edits the video is perfectly suited to the content of this book um where matching this sort of banal storyline with this hyper like uh worlds colliding crashing together um sort of uh storyline and uh, and it's just so funny how he handles it and talks about it and uh, yeah that that is so great and then um amy yuki vickers um made this great video uh called um convenience store woman and a japan vlog and uh, and i particularly enjoyed this this uh this video because she talks about the novel convenience store woman a japanese novel that was translated and published this year uh which um i talked about and a lot of people have talked about and made comparisons to the novel eleanor oliphant is completely fine and the sort of and it's um because these these novels naturally go together or seem like they naturally go together because superficially their characters are very similar and what they talk about the condition of loneliness and this very these very isolated characters who um find it very difficult to socialize with other people um the the there's that parallel between them but she talks about how um there there's actually quite difference a lot of differences in the way that the authors go about 
handling this subject matter and portraying these characters and the character differences between them. And also it's just wonderful that she makes this vlog um, showing these flashes of scenes in Tokyo. And, uh, and so you can actually see uh, people working in a convenience store and, and it just adds to the whole atmosphere of talking about the content of this novel. And, um, and so, yeah, I enjoy when booktubers can, can add that other dimension to, um, it's not just the review of the, the book, but it's, it's, um, it's the environment in which you read it and the, the whole atmosphere of the book that you can portray. And uh, I thought that was so clever and interesting and well done. And so finally, the, the last prompt is just to um, tag some other um, booktubers uh, to, uh, to uh, respond to this. And, uh, and Adam, as, as typical as, uh, of um, people who create their own tagged videos, um, tags, you know, almost everyone in, uh, in this, this video, um, which is, um, you know, understandable because uh, when you make your own tag video, you're, um, you, uh, you, you hope that other people will respond to it. So don't just want to tag a few people, but uh, tag a whole slew of people. And, uh, but um, some people that he didn't tag that I would like to tag as well is Rachel Ray um, from All Things Bookish. Um, she, she's a, a great booktuber, um, really fun to watch. Uh, there's Tired Mama Tries to Read. Um, she's rather another really interesting, fun booktuber to watch. And then finally, uh, Olivia Pope, I would tag her as well. Um, so yeah, but, uh, but obviously this is open to anyone. If you wanna respond to this tag, um, either by making your own booktube video or responding to the prompts in the comments uh, below the video, that would be great. So uh, I'll, I'll, but I'll list all the prompts in the, um, in the description below if you click show more. and. Uh, and uh, also all the books that I've talked about. So, um, so thank you for watching. Thank you very much, Adam, for making this tag video and, uh, and for tagging me in it. And uh, I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.